Hey guys, thank you for jumping onto my channel today. If you are a new viewer, then welcome to my channel. This is a channel where I talk about project management and help new aspiring and seasoned project managers to level up their project management game. So you are in the right place. If you're a current subscriber, thank you so much for jumping right back in. Welcome back. So let's dive right into today's topic. Today, we are gonna learn how to create an effective project timeline. So what I'm going to do is I am going to start by talking about what a timeline is, the importance of a project timeline, and then I will move on to a step-by-step -step demonstration of how to create a project timeline. So whether you are a seasoned project manager or a new project manager, this demonstration will really help you master the art of creating a project timeline so that your projects will run smoothly and run on budget. So let's get started. So what is a project timeline? A project timeline is a detailed schedule for your project. It lists out all of the tasks involved along with a clear deadline for that specific task, okay? So from start to finish, your team will be clear on their individual tasks that need to take place and the date that that particular task needs to be completed by. So project timelines are so important, specifically because they are essential for keeping your team on track and for ensuring that your project is completed on time and within budget. So there is no way that you can manage a project without a project timeline. Like it is essential for the smooth running of a project. These project timelines are a clear visual representation of the project's progress. So they help identify potential delays, so, for example, if a client wants to go live, you know, at a certain date and they're telling you that you can only receive the assets for that project like a week before their live date, that's a crazy short turnaround time a week. So if, you know, depending on what you're used to at your particular role, if you're used to short turnaround projects where you can turn around projects in a week, that's great. If not, and you need at least two weeks, then that is going to be unrealistic. So they're going to either need to be flexible with that live date or they have to find a way of getting those assets to you much earlier. These things you can assess when you have a project timeline because then you can work out your date and you can see whether it is feasible or not to take on a project. So let's jump straight into the demonstration. Hello, hello. So we are back to start the demonstration. So as you can see here, we've got our project timeline. So we're gonna just start by giving a overall um, explanation of each part of this timeline before we get right in. So this is where you would put the project title. So the name of the project uh, for this demonstration, I've just popped project one as the name of the project. Um, here we have got the specific color codes. So for example, once it hits purple, then you know that that's where we are waiting to receive the brief. If the project task is a green task, then it's with us, the internal teams. If it's yellow, it's with the client. Once it's, once the project is at the yellow, sorry, the red phase, it means that it's been approved. And once it hits black, that means that the project is live. So I've put up a little disclaimer here as well that says, please note, timings may change depending on feedback. So so if you've accounted for, you know, a day to turn around to client feedback, but the level of feedback that's been shared with you from the client is quite a lot and, you know, it might take a bit longer than one day, then you would need to adjust the timeline to accommodate, you know, two days to work on a client's piece of feedback, okay? So here in this small grid, I've just popped team holidays here. So you can just add in whenever somebody from the project team is going on holiday. You would know if you need someone to cover, um, you might, if you need to hire a freelancer to cover someone who's going on holiday for a week, for example, just so that the project still hits the live date. So as you can see here, we've got the bank holidays that have been listed here. So it's really important that you also um, just make a note of these dates in your timeline so that you don't accidentally add like project feedback from a client on Monday the 8th of May and no one's going to be in. Sometimes it's so easy to make these mistakes if these holidays aren't highlighted. So and it's better to do it at the start of a project timeline creation rather than halfway through. And then you realize, oh, my gosh, I've just based this whole timeline on you know, feedback being due on a bank holiday or a sign off on the bank holiday to hit this live date. So you, it will just cause further issues down the line of your timeline. So just make a note of all bank holidays for that particular period of time. 
So you can add a little project description here, which I've done here. So it's a lens build project. So it's creating an amazing lens. And um, in order to do that, you would need a concept in phase and a storyboard in phase. So each different phase requires a different team and different um, people who are responsible for different tasks. So the live date is also listed here, which is going to be Wednesday, the 7th of June. So let's get started with the task list. So this is going to be the column where we add the whole entire task list to create this amazing lens. OK, so we're going to go through this step by step. And the amazing thing is what you can do if you're new to a role or a, um, you know, you're new to working on a particular project is ask your team for a project template or a previous, yeah, a previous project template of that same particular project. So if you're working on the lens build and one of the senior PMs has also worked on a lens build, then you can just ask that senior PM if they would be kind enough to share a project that they worked on, um, the timeline for that project. That way you can just get an idea of the exact if the exact task so you don't have to create it yourself you know it's already there so then it will just make life much more easier for you and the process for creating the timeline much more seamless as well so we can just um pretend that we don't know um there's not a previous template for this particular project so we can just pop in here the task lists that we think will be suitable so we always want to start off with a brief so you want to make sure that the client has shared the brief and the project assets. So we can pop here full brief and project and required assets provided. This would be the responsibility of a client. We shouldn't really be kicking off a project without a brief and we can't kick off a project without the assets anyway. So we can just pop here that this would be Tuesday the 8th, sorry, Tuesday the 2nd of May as monday the first of may is a bank holiday so we've noted that down so we are already one step ahead of the game so yeah we've got our purple color code there so the second task we could say would be the creative concepts so yeah we can pop creative concept in down there so this would just mean that in four yeah, they've submitted a brief and um, what we want to then do is just go back to them with a few ideas some really cool creative ideas just highlighting to them you know which is your preferred kind of route for your brief so this would be done by the creative strat and we can say that it would take them two days to put this creative concept deck together so that would stay with us internally so that would be the green color code so we can just pop Thursday the 4th of May boom next step would be a feasibility check so the reason why we would have a feasibility check is because once the concept has been created and before we want to send the concept ideas to the client, you want to just make sure that the concept ideas are all feasible. The last thing you want to do is send a concept idea to a client and they, they're like, yeah, I want to go with this really cool lens build, you know, a world lens build, for example. Um, and then you then say, and then it's not feasible to actually work on that lens build in the space of time where they want to go live because it might require a specific developer to work on that who's on holiday, for example. You know, so in this feasibility check meeting, you want to include the resource manager who, you know, would be in charge of allocating resource so they can already have an idea and pencil in specific uh, resources like developers or freelancers who would be able to work on each idea of the project. So it just means that once the idea concept idea goes to the client, there'll be no hiccups once they choose a particular route and you're essentially set to go. So we can say that once the concept has been um, finalized on Thursday, the 4th of May, we can have the meeting the next day. So that would be Friday, the 5th of May. And that's still internal, so that can remain green. 
So then once we've had this meeting, then the next step would be to send the concept ideas to the client. So we can pop here V1 concept to oops, concept to client. Now this would be the project manager's responsibility to send the concept to the client. And obviously the, you know, depending on you know the project or the um, the team or what the client actually wants, it can be done in a meeting format or it can just be sent via an email with a detailed explanation of each idea. So we can pop that in as that would then be the next day, which in our situation would be Monday. However, Monday is a bank holiday, so coronation bank holiday, so nobody will be working that day. So then we can pop that as Tuesday, the 9th of May. So V1 to the client, that is with us. So let's pop that as green as well. Cool. So next would be client feedback. So what you want to make sure as well at this point is that is that the client, you have already asked the client in advance how you know how long of a turnaround time they would need. You know, a standard kind of turnaround time is 30, 48 hours, which is two days. So just for this example, we can pop 48 hours here, two days. However, depending on the client, they may require longer, depending on whether they need to share the piece of work with their legal team or with a senior team member who lives in a different you know, country. So their hours might be different, their timings might be different when it comes to their hours of working. So they may need longer. So you wanna just make sure you check this before you actually complete a timeline as well. Obviously, if it's a client that you've worked with before and their normal turnaround time is two days, then that's awesome, but you should always double check that as well. So that would mean Thursday, the 11th of May. So we can just pop that to yellow. Oh, why is that not going? Maybe because I put the R there. Yeah, cool. So after the client feedback, then you want to just pop, you know, final concept to the client so that you can get that final approval. Final concept to client, and that would be the responsibility um, of the PM. One day we can probably that would take us one day based on it, you know, their feedback. Let's hope that it's a, it's quite light feedback. Um, so that would be Friday the twelfth of May. So the next step would be for the concept to be approved. So we can pop the task here would be concept approval. And we can pop this as the same day. Friday the 12th of May. Cool, so as we've put in our key here, approval would be in the beautiful red. So we can just pop here the red color and Bob's your uncle, there we go. So this is the initial concepting phase, okay? So essentially it's gonna take around two weeks um, would have taken a shorter period of time if there wasn't a bank holiday, but you know, sometimes we can't do anything about that, so all good. Next step would be once the concept's been approved, it will then go on over to the designer to create the storyboard. Now the storyboard will just be a frame by frame depiction of what the actual lens would look like. So the next step would be V1 of the storyboard to the client. So the responsibility of this would be the designer so we can pop designer here and we can always pop their name here as well. An example, Ralph, um, for the, you know, this example. Um, so yeah, be one of the storyboards for the client. So we can pop that as, you know, that could take them two days. Ralph, Ralph's got two days to work on that. So that would be Tuesday, the 16th of May. So Ralph, you have got two days to work on this. So thanks Ralph, once it's in, we can add a internal review just to make sure that it's 
we've got enough time we've allocated enough time to go through the storyboard based on the client brief and just you know put it side by side make sure that we've met everything that's in their requirements as well as um, any extra notes that they've popped into the um, approval of that particular concept idea. So internal review, um, we can do we can do that on the same day as sharing it with the client as well. So internal review and then B1 to client. So that would be the PM's responsibility. So we can just give that one day. So that would be Wednesday the 17th of May. Awesome, so we are really working we're really getting through this, which is amazing because this is literally how it will look. You would literally have these color codes and it will be so nice when you're finished. You can just strike through each part of the project task that's been completed. Anyway, before I get ahead of myself, um, after we've sent that to the client, we want the client to feedback to tell us, yes, they are loving it. Uh, make a few changes or uh oh, I am not sure about this. Um, you guys need to read. <laughs> let's let's actually hope that that would not happen in this case, because then they wouldn't probably wouldn't then be able to hit their deadline, depending on you know the level of their um, their feedback. So anyway, just for this example, we're going to hope that the client's feedback is very minimal. So client feedback. This is the responsibility of the client, and we give them two days. So that would leave leave them to Friday, the nineteenth of May. And we can highlight this yellow. Boom. Client feedback. Okay, next is version two of the storyboard to the client. So, mm -hmm. I got it right? No, I didn't. B2 storyboard to client. So, that's gone back to our lovely designer, Ralph. There we go. And he's got, yeah, we can give him two days and i guess if if for whatever reason your your you know your timeline is has to be much tighter because sometimes you know the client has a specific live date so you, you might have to accommodate that by just having you know one day for v2 or and so forth so this is quite a i guess you can say it's quite a generous uh timeline in in that sense because ralph has two days to work on v2 as well so then that takes us to monday the 22nd of may so that we're on the next week and that would then be uh, Tuesday the 23rd. Perfect. Okay. So after that, we want to just hope that once we've sent V2 to the client on Tuesday the 23rd of May, after that, we have gotten a approval. So, yeah, I mean... Sometimes you can add in another round of amends, but just for the sake of this, we're going to just say, you know what, you've gone through the concepting phase, um, you've got your storyboard V1, so now you've got your V2 of the storyboard, we want to hope that you're now happy, client, and you're going to approve that. So that's the responsibility of the client to approve that storyboard, and we want to just, we want to give them one day for this, this is super quick, right, so after they've seen V2, they know what it looks like already, it is then approved. So that would be Wednesday, the 24th of May. We can highlight this red as it's been approved. And then next would be over to the developers. Okay, so we can then pop the um, Monster Storyboard has been approved. It's over to developers. We can pop build V1 to client and we can pop here the developer and I guess you can pop the PM as well because it, this is when it's going to the client as well so the PM would need to be responsible for sending that um, lens build v1 example to the client so this we want to just assume it's going to take um, typical build of a lens, maybe four days if it's a simple face lens, for example. So let's just pop four days here. Um, yeah, so that would be Wednesday the 24th. So Thursday, Friday, Monday. Aha, Monday is a bank holiday, so we don't want to include that. Then Tuesday, Wednesday. So that would be Wednesday the 31st. 
of May. So we want to highlight this green. So V1 build to the client. Then the client provides feedback on the build that's been sent to them. Let's hope that they like it. They just have, you know, maybe some minimal copy amends or they want to just give a, you know, a zoom into here or something very basic. Let's hope. Um, so we want to give them their usual two days. So that would be Friday the 2nd of June. And then we're going to highlight this yellow. Voila. So after the feedback, then it goes back to the developers for the final build. Developer is working on finalizing it now. So we can give them a day, one day for that, which would then be Monday, the 5th of June. We can highlight that green. After the final build has been sent to the client, the client will then approve it. So they have to approve it by, by, we can give them a day to do this in order to hit their deadline, their live date. So we want to give them Tuesday the 6th of June. And we can pop this in red again. Oops, that did not highlight red. Red. Beautiful. So we're almost at the end of our timeline. And then the last part would be the live date. So yeah, live date, Wednesday 7th of June. We don't necessarily need to have that there. So I'll just take that out. I just copied it from the um, from this field there. So live. So the developer is going to set this live from their end so we can give a day just to finalize the lend and do all the little you know little admin bits that need to be done in order to set this live and published and we can pop here wednesday the 7th of june so we know what we're working with and highlight this black text would need to be white beautiful and there we have it. There is our project timeline, good and ready to go. So what you also want to do is just get the timeline sense checked by each person who is working on each phase. So the creative strategist, just to double check that, you know, these turnaround times are feasible for them because they've got two days to create the concept. So just double check with them that this works for them double check with the designer that their turnaround time works for them too they might say yeah it's all good just depending on the feedback which obviously makes sense so you know ralph might take any, might need a little bit longer for the storyboard if the client you know doesn't like the version one um and then always check with the developer as well for their initial especially for their initial build um timings how long that would take if it's a simple face lens for example it might take four days if it's much more of a you know um technical uh, world lens and the client has really specific requirements it might take much longer um, which obviously means that the budget is going to be higher as well so you want to just make sure that that all fits with the needs and requirements of the developer so yeah four days should be enough for a face lens and once I've given the go ahead for that, all good. This is just one project, essentially. If you're working on a timeline and you've been given a project that has, you know, multiple deliverables, like five lens builds and, you know, different parts, different projects, essentially, then you want to definitely get that sense checked by someone. This might not require a sense check, but you can always still get it sense checked by a line manager or a senior PM or somebody on the project, your project. Um, management team and another thing that I love to do when I've been working on the project and as each task has been completed is to pop a strike through each task so we can go to format text and strike so once we've you know once the client has shared the briefing assets we can then pop a strike through that task so that we know that this date has been hit so then 
I like to, some people have can pop it through the task. I just like to pop the strike through the actual date. Um, as as you go through the project um, timings and the project life cycle, you can just pop a strike through each task. And then when you look back at the timeline or if somebody else wants to double check your timeline or just sense check where we're at with the project then they can see okay we are we have hit this particular date and sometimes on a Monday morning when you get back after a long weekend it's like okay where am I at with this project again oh yeah cool so yeah next is we wait in for a feasibility check that's happening the next day so there we go I hope you found this demonstration really helpful and I will be giving you guys the ability to download this template for free so check the description underneath the video to download this project timeline i hope you liked it i hope it is some one of the timelines that you use for your projects if you do let me know how you found it and how you were able to manage your project working with this timeline if you like this video and you found it valuable please give it a thumbs up please like it and please subscribe to my channel and let me know in the comment section if there is any question that you have and um, I would love to do a video specifically tailored to answering your questions so yeah just hit me up in the comment section and let me know thanks guys have an amazing day bye